producer has no financial interest in the subject matter of this film. What we are about to see now is the management of a drastic complication that may happen during fecal emulsification, huge iridodialysis. We are going to present a case describing how to avoid iridodialysis by avoiding working against the nature and respecting the fluidic dynamics, then how to manage huge iridodialysis once it happens by iris fixation suture with triangular scleral flap technique. It was an easy and hopeful case. Having nothing but faint posterior subcapsular cataract with best corrected visual acuity of 0.9, but still the patient had problems with quality of vision and driving issues. Being that easy, it was scheduled to be done by one of my junior colleagues. I was not in the operation room as I was assisting in another case and everything was going somehow fine except for the prolonged difficult epineucleus removal together with a prolapsed iris that should have been managed properly. But the surgeon stated that she suffered a lot doing multiple maneuvers trying to reposit the iris, but unfortunately all were failing. And to my greatest amazement while watching this video, she decided to go on with irrigation aspiration trying to remove the epinucleus and cortical matter, paying no attention to the prolapsed iris tissue. Finally, the surgeon started to think about the iris, and I only hope she didn't. With a very aggressive unskilled move she tried to reposit the iris using a spatula but with the irrigation probe still inside the eye pushing the iris out, acting against all the laws of physics, acting against the nature. And that's most probably the cause why all her previous maneuvers for iris repositioning failed. And that's when our biggest problem started to show. As you can see now an iris dialysis is starting here but she didn't notice. Let's focus on the mistake the surgeon did. She went riptide by pushing the iris with the spatula against the irrigation fluid current, which is again the instinct we are all born with. We see it everywhere around. Dolphins, for example, never go riptide, always swim with the waves. Human surfers apply, always go with the direction of the wave, never against. And that's what our surgeon now knows for sure. She only saw the bleeding, and thanks to our Lord, she finally decided to come out. She injected viscoelastic and that's when, oh my god, a huge iridal dialysis is showing here, nearly extending all through the vertical 180 degrees. She called for my help. I scrubbed in as fast as I could, and to be honest, for a few moments after I sat down on the microscope, I was in a shock stage, total flaccidity of thinking, what on earth should I do now? I took a deep breath, thinking for a while, injecting some viscoelastic, trying to explore how big is the problem I have to solve, trying setting up my mind, putting a plan. And that's when it hit me. What about trying to fix the iris periphery back to its root using double arm turn zero proline suture with two straight needles? I immediately started by opening the conjunctiva and cauterizing the scleral bed, then I went for dissecting a triangular scleral flap that is centered over the dialysis area. And before showing you the real video, I'd like to show you an animation describing the idea. The idea is simply to introduce the two needles of the proline suture through the cornea, passing them through each end of the iris periphery on the dialysis area and retrieving them from beneath the scleral flap. Pulling a loop of each of the two sutures through the main wound, cutting them to get two free ends, Tying these two ends together and finally pulling the other two ends from beneath the scleral flap and tying them together, pulling the iris back to its root. Here I am introducing the first needle through the cornea using McCallum technique. 
This needle was passed through the iris at the lower end of the dialysis guided outside by a 27 gauge syringe to come out under the scleral flap. It's so clear that the main challenge during this step was to have full control on the needle movement inside the eye to avoid any undesirable movement that may injure the posterior capsule with subsequent vitreous prolapse in the field that could make the situation worse. In the same way, the second needle is introduced through the cornea, then through the upper end of the dialysis and finally guided to come out under the scleral flap. A loop from each of the two sutures is retrieved outside the anterior chamber through the main wound and then cutting these two loops. Now and after cutting the two loops we have four cut ends to tie and eventually secure the iris. Two ends coming out from the main wound and another two ends coming out from beneath the scleral flap. Now the two inner ends are tied together forming a loop. And finally pulling the two outer ends to approximate the iris to its root and tying them to each other below the scleral flap. Finally, the iris is back in place, clear of flat bed suture, and back to FACO. Cautiously, I removed all remaining lens matter using the Simco cannula. Implanted the IOL. Sutured the main wound with a single stitch just for safety. And finally removal of viscoelastic material and stromal hydration of all wounds. And thanks to God you can now see her iris before and after the repair, where her iris was returned 100% back in place, with best corrected visual acuity of 1 about 2 weeks after the operation, and what was amazing is that her quality of vision problems and driving issues all disappeared. It really was an easy and hopeful fickle case, but moreover, she was a lucky patient.